Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about HP Z420 Workstation and specifically we're going to go over the RAM and CPUs inside. Well hey, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the HP Z420 Workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything useful in today's video, click that like and smash that subscribe. Well hey, we're going to get rolling. Uh, first things first, we'll go over the CPUs. There is one CPU inside this machine. It's an LGA 2011 socket. You can use Intel Xeon E5 1600 V1 or V2 series and you can also use E5 2600 V1 or V2 series CPUs. However, this is very important to note. You have to have this type of motherboard to use V2. If you have one of these two motherboards, then you can only use V1. So if you want to know if yours is V2 capable, then you need to open your machine, check out the motherboard and get the part number. And again, if you have this part number, you're good for V2. If you have one of these two, you're stuck with V1. So I wanted to note that right away. And then people ask me all the time, like, hey, what, what kind of processors do you like to put inside this? Well, I'll tell you, it depends on the application that you're doing. Let's just say and you're using this as a desktop at home uh, and you're just you know using it to get on the internet and uh, to check emails and stuff like that. Um, and it's V2 capable, um, then really I would recommend something like an E5 uh, 2600, uh, 2660 V2. Um, it's not too expensive and there's a lot of bang for your buck in that. Now let's say you're doing gaming and you're using this at home and, and, and you want to just like beef this up and get the most out of it. Well then personally what I would recommend is, is something like an E5 2690 V2 and potentially even like a 2695 V2 or something a little bit higher. Um, but that will uh, really get you the most out of this. So that's what I personally recommend uh, as far as CPUs are concerned. Regarding the RAM, uh, there's a couple of different uh, things to start with. Um, it takes DDR3, uh, there's eight DIMM slots inside, uh, you can use a couple of different speeds as low as uh, 1066, 1333, 1600, all the way up to 1866. Uh, and there are a number of different sizes you can use as low as uh, 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, uh, or all the way up to 32 gig. Um, I will note uh, that there are three types that you can use as well. Uh, you can use uh, ECC unbuffered, uh, which is also known as a server UDIM. You can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, or or you can use load reduced uh, known as an LR DIMM. Um, and this is really important because uh, each type of memory uh, you know, will have some uh, differences to it as a whole. So like the ECM buffered, for instance, you can only put in eight, eight gigs for a max of 64 gigabytes. And it costs a lot more per gigabyte for ECM buffered. So I, you know, really, on, on if you ask me, I wouldn't recommend uh, the ECC on buffer, but it is an option. Um, now, ECC registered or load reduced, you can get actually 256 gigabytes using 832 gigs, and that's what I would recommend using. Um, and if you want to get the highest speed, then you'd want to go load reduced, which will get you 1866, where ECC registered, the highest 32 gig um, will be uh, 1600. So it uh, depends on what you're looking for. Again, if you're gaming, uh, 32 gig, 14900 uh, load reduced, which is the 1866 megahertz, that's probably the way that you want to go. And then pairing that with some E5 uh, 2690 V2s, that would make it a, a pretty powerful machine overall. So uh, those are my recommendations. Now I want to open this up. I want to show you a little bit more about the insides. I want to show you the channels, how you install the memory. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Really, you want to keep the machine safe and, and protect it. So I'll be right back. All right, now we're safe to open the machine. You're just going to pop the latch or tab right there and move the top to the side nice and easy. All right, well, let's uh, point out a couple things we already talked about. There's one CPU, and you can see the uh, heatsink fan combo here to keep it nice and cool. There are eight DIMM slots. The first four DIMM slots that, uh, are over here on the left, and there are four more DIMM slots that are under the fan right here. Uh, and then we didn't really talk too much about the storage, but you can see all the uh, options for uh, adding multiple hard drives, which is a, a nice feature for the Z420 as a whole. Okay, so how do we access the four DIMM slots over here? It's nice and simple. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's nice and simple. It's actually kind of a pain, uh, but it's not too hard. Uh, you're just gonna uh, take that green tab and you're gonna push it in and you're gonna lift this up. And this is the part that I personally dislike is uh, when you get right here, um, this cable just isn't very long and this fan is hooked in so you need to be real careful 
and you pull this connector out and you see what I'm saying there's not a lot of give here so you have to be a little bit careful uh, that you don't just rip it out okay um, outside of that the rest of this is super easy okay so um, when you look at the uh, the dims as a whole uh, as far as the memory channels it can be a little confusing for the Z420 but no worries I'm, I'm here to help okay so uh, as we discussed there are eight dim slots within the eight dim slots there are four memory channels and within the four memory channels there are two dims per channel now with most uh, machines including most HP servers uh, the white is the start of the channel uh, same thing with Dell uh, for this machine, it's actually a little bit different, and the labeling is a little bit tough because the labeling, it, it just says, you know, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, but it doesn't really help you as far as how to know which channels to do. So the start of the channel is actually the, so I'm going to push all these in real quick so I can show you. The start of the channel, this is the first one, so if you were installing uh, one module, that's where you would put it, right there. If you were installing two modules, it would be on the outsides, okay? If you were installing three mod, well, you can, you don't want to do three, uh, you want to do four, but if you were doing four, it would be in the uh, four black slots. And that's actually really important because uh, a lot of people only put four modules in this machine, um, and that is the best way to uh, to insert it. You might think, ah, I don't want to have to remove this fan and do all that stuff. I'll just put them in the four slots over here. Don't do that. Take the extra second, uh, remove them and put them in the four black slots and you say why you want to maximize your performance um, if, if you overwork just these two channels and then the two channels over here aren't doing anything at all then you're not maximizing the performance you want a nice even distribution uh, of the load across all the channels and that's one of the things that I kind of stress of importance if you're not maxing out now of course personally I would say max it out uh, you know put in uh, 832 gigs and get this thing humming uh, because you put in 832 gigs I mean you're, you're talking about a huge boost in performance uh, but I get it not everybody wants to do that or needs to do that for the applications that they're using this for if you're just using this as a desktop computer at home really you could probably get away with you know 816 gigs and this thing could would one would would run really well okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and start to install them um, but I want to note before I install them uh, two tips first tip um, and this is uh, one that I, I kind of stress. It, 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 to me, it's important because it's a very common issue. Um, you need to understand that there is this notch right here in the middle, known as a key, and this notch is not perfectly centered. So when you go to install the module, you have to line it up properly because there is a little notch that is a plastic notch that's sticking up inside the dim slot. And if you were to put it in or, or align it up wrong, you could damage the dim itself or damage the module or the, 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 the slot, which would mean you might have to replace the motherboard. Neither are solutions that you want. So you just need to make sure you line it up properly. So that's the first thing. So again, if you were only putting in two dims, you're gonna wanna put them in the two outside slots okay so this would be the first one and then if you were putting again a second one and this does flip over here as far as which direction it's facing and another actual key point that I like to point out is my second tip here is make sure all your tabs are open this makes it a little bit easier so you're not fumbling around the tabs can actually kind of prevent you from installing the module when you're trying to put it in because it kind of blocks uh, the leads from getting inserted. So, all right, the first two, I've laid them down, but here's another uh, key point, is they're not fully inserted. So if you were to try to boot up the machine, they will not register and they will not work. So you need to hear these two clicks and make sure you fully insert it. Click one, click two. Now that module is fully in. Now if you look, you see these three tabs over here because they have no module, you see how they're sticking out and the tab right here is in. That's important because that's how you know the module is fully inserted. So again, let's do it again on this side. Click one, Click two, okay, and again you can see the three tabs over here are sticking out, and this tab is sticking in. This is this is how you know you've done it properly, and this is how you know uh, that the modules are in perfectly. And I'll go ahead and I'll skip that and show you if you were only putting in four. I'm gonna max this all out, but if you're only putting in four, again you want to put them in the four black dim slots, and this is what it would look like for four, okay. Nice and simple, and that would be the best performance. Now, of course, like I said, eight's the way to go, in my opinion. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do all of them. 
and just to save you some time we're going to fast forward all right and just like that it only took us a couple of minutes and we were able to put in 256 gigabytes i mean that's going to be a huge boost in performance for the z420 as a whole um, and again you know one of the things i like to tell people if you're using this at home and you're nervous about opening it up and you're nervous about can i do this can i install this yeah it's, it's really easy even if you're not a real computer technician if you're just you know someone at home that wants to you know to make your your system better you can do this um you know videos like this on youtube make it really easy to um to, to do this kind of stuff and uh, i i would say you know if you're concerned um, you know, one, you can always message us. We can we can help you. But really, it's an easy process, uh, and you just follow the steps, and you just make sure they're simply you know installed. Um, and one thing that I always recommend at the end is make sure all these tabs that we're talking about are all fully in. Every once in a while, you'll see one that's jetting out, and that that module is not fully seated. So you just need to make sure that if you see that, you just reseat that module, and everything's good to go. So now we're going to put the fan back in, and the first thing you got to do. Is actually plug this in which now this is the part I really dislike <laughs> it's just a tight squeeze over here um, so you need to make sure you get this in give me a second here all right and then you're gonna slide this down all right uh, and that will just clip right back in you'll even hear it click right here all right you hear that click and then you put the top back on and hey you call it a day well, thanks again for uh, stopping by. If you need any upgrades for your Z420, uh, do us a favor. Email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. We would love to help you out. And hey, if you made it this far, click that like, smash that subscribe. Take care. Have a great day.